Hey guys, Kai here. So, this video is going to be a little bit different type of video. Basically, I'm going to be sharing with you a presentation I made for my communication class. So, basically, uh, it's a PowerPoint and I just put it on the screen and I'm just going to talk over it. Obviously, for my communications class, it's not exactly how it went. I got in front of the class and I had my PowerPoint and I talked and all that stuff but just for the purposes of making this video easier I'm just gonna kinda talk you through the PowerPoint that I made for that class and yeah so as far as like interesting video this isn't gonna be one of the more interesting ones but it is pretty informative it's on transgender medical care transgender health care and uh, why I feel like we need to make improvements in those areas so Let's get right to it. Alright, so the theme of this presentation is we need to improve healthcare for the transgender community. Alright, so why did I choose this topic? Well, being transgender, I wanted to, it's very personal to me, and I wanted to talk about something personal to me. I also showed my class a video at this point, but I'm not going to put it in this video just to make things simple. I'll put it in the description, but I'll be putting out a longer version of that video on January 20th for my one year on testosterone, just so you guys know. So, what is the agenda in this presentation? I talk about what is the problem, why do we care, how do we fix the problem, how will the world be better, what if we just maintain the status quo, I have a conclusion, and a call to action. The three main problems I focus on in this presentation are that medical transition is costly and insurance is often limited, it's very gender specific medical care these days is very gender specific and that can be difficult uh, for some transgender individuals to navigate and medical providers just don't have training in caring for transgender patients so the first problem we'll focus on is that health care is very expensive and insurance coverage is often limited Despite studies that show that medical transition can greatly increase a transgender person's quality of life, transition is often costly and not covered by insurance. On the screen, you see one specific person's transition costs. I found a website that actually added up all the possible surgeries and all the hormones and basically everything you can do to transition and the total possible cost for a female to male transition ended up being $124,400 and for a male to female it ended up being $140,400 if when transgender individuals can't afford these transition costs they'll sometimes go into sex work or try unprescribed do-it-yourself hormones which are both very dangerous things on top of all this, sometimes insurance won't even cover certain procedures that do not align with an individual's gender. For example, a transgender man who is listed as male on his insurance may not be covered for cervical cancer screening despite not having a hysterectomy yet. So that basically leads right into my next point, which is there is a lack of accessibility to medical treatment for gender-specific issues. Oftentimes, individuals have to choose between male or female on medical forms. But using myself, for example, what if the individual is on hormones but hasn't had any surgeries yet? It can be very limiting to just check either male or female. And that's not even going into non-binary individuals. It just requires a lot more explanation than uh, a cisgender individual because the choices are so limiting. There have also been studies that show that trans men have a higher risk of certain cancers such as cervical, uterine, or ovarian because of fear of discrimination or being misgendered if they go get screened. No one should feel like they uh, should feel unsafe or like they're going to be discriminated against for going to get necessary medical checkups. 
Also, screening programs can overlook transgender individuals. This is an actual quote from a trans woman. I've been seeing my doctor for hormones for four years, but the idea or need for me to do a mammogram was never raised, so I asked if I needed one. The doctor was stumped. I was his first older transgender patient. So, if the patient here doesn't know what medical checkups they might need, and neither does a doctor, things can go unchecked. You expect your doctor, or you would like to have the peace of mind that your doctor will know what you need medical-wise, but a lot of times this isn't always the case for transgender individuals. So that leads right into the final issue I want to cover, which is lack of training and medical expertise in dealing with transgender patients. So here I've included on the screen the hashtag TransHealthFail that was on Twitter, and I believe it still is. This one here says, I saw a specialist psychologist for an ADHD assessment who asked about my surgical status. Obviously, that's not an appropriate question when going, on, going in for uh, something like ADHD. Surgery doesn't matter or anything like that. Due to stigma, transgender care is not included in mainstream medical training. And in a recent survey, 50% of transgender individuals reported having to teach their doctors how to care for them or what they needed. Here you see two more trans health fails. The top one says, I don't know how to treat a transgender. And the patient replied, I'm here about joint pain. I've joint pain I've had since before starting HRT. And the bottom one says, there was a time I had to take a pregnancy test before getting a chest x-ray, despite lacking a uterus. So, basically, you see here, just things that aren't even relevant to treatment, oftentimes, or sometimes doctors will bring up, or just unnecessary procedures, because they don't know better, or they're not really sure how to go about it when a someone's gender identity doesn't match their sex assigned at birth or anything like that just basically what I'm trying to say and some for some reason failing to say right now is the way they talk to the patients the way uh, knowing what the patient needs and all that all has room for improvement so how do we fix the problem well, we could have advanced and specialized training in medical schools. We could reduce cost and expand insurance coverage. And we could eliminate bias in the medical system. How will the world be better if we implement improvements? There will be less risk for the transgender community. There will be additional expertise in fast evolving in a fast-evolving area of medical practice. And it will promote greater awareness and acceptance of the transgender community. And this may be you, this may be someone you know, this may be your friend, your relative, you know, we're all just human, we're all just people. If we keep things the way they are, there will still be risk to the transgender community, there will be feelings of isolation and lack of acceptance, and there will be no medical innovation or improvements in this area. So in conclusion, just to go over my main points once more, physicians do not currently possess sufficient training and specialization in transgender medical issues, transition is costly and often not covered by insurance, and the stigma of transgender identity and the bias against transgender people often results in diminished treatment when the person's gender does not align with their sex. So what can you do? Well, you can donate funds to organizations like the Center of Excellence for Transgender, transgender Health. I'll put a link to their site down below. You can write to congressmen for better laws, and you can just be aware of the issue, especially when you have the chance to vote on laws and policies when you are legal voting age. Final thing I want to say is just that prosthetic penises are going to be a thing someday, and I don't know about you, but I want to be around to see that. Thank you. So that is the end of my presentation, guys. Thank you for watching this. Sorry it was a little strange at some points. 
I just kind of did this on the fly with my note cards that I have and didn't really rehearse it much for this kind of presentation, but I hope you got a little bit of information and I have the, all my links for all my research down below and also the link to the National Center for Transgen- oh, the, wow. The Center of Excellence for Transgender Health. That's what it is. Yes. So, I will talk to you all soon. I love you all. Peace.